Well, good day, ladies and gents. Full face here, coming at you live and direct from Bunbury, Western Australia. Got another review here for you today. Almost, well, the second last in the series, the XT660R engine. Um, again, this is the MT-03. This is a 2013 model MT-03, before they brought out the new one, which is based on the R3. I wanted to have a go at this one, seeing that I've tried now two bikes with the, the 660 engine format. Um, this one obviously being a little bit different again, this is the street format. Um, and it's got a little bit funky swing arm shock setup happening there. The funny thing I've noticed about this thing, when you're riding and you go over bumps, it feels like uh, your old XF Falcons. You know, you go off the, off the edge of a curb or something like that and it goes tss, 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 does that. It's funny. But uh, yeah, as you can see, it's, um, it's a pretty funky little setup. So these little MT-03s were brought out, um, I think about 2012 or something like that with the MT range. And they weren't the hugest seller, so they've, they've, they've swapped them around for a little bit more of a, a sportier feel. Now, there's a couple of contributors, we think, to why it wasn't a, uh, such a great seller. And I've talked about it in the XT660Z and R videos a little bit as well. Being that this engine is very much that that touring or agricultural sort of feeling engine and it's it, it does have its place in a sports bike but that's where I think you find a lot of the younger generation want something that's high revving something that's a bit more highly strung whereas this thing it, it revs out at, at, at seven grand and that's it um, but with that if you can learn to love that um, it, it has its perks I mean this thing is a, a talky little beast and I've sort of learnt to love it a little bit around town and stuff like that. Just cruising out the corners and pin it. It's just awesome. Even once you get into like a fourth and fifth gears, you've still got that low down grunt. And this one has actually got about 800 kilometers on it, I think. And this one's in the shop just for, just for sale really quickly. It was traded in for another bike and it's actually just about sold. We, I thought I'd just quickly get out and show you the difference. I didn't want to do the full review with um, with the DSLR and all that other stuff because I haven't got much time today, but I did want to just show you um, this bike as well. So a couple of things I've noted when I just when I'm coming up here is the seating. It's very similar to the MT-03 in feel, the new MT-03, sorry. It's got a really short sort of tank. Well, it's, it's a short seating area, but the tank makes you sort of sit in one spot and then right at the back as you would have seen when I sat onto it there's a big bump there and it really locates you and you can't sort of move forward or back so that's the one thing as soon as I get onto this bike I always feel like I can't really stretch out but you just you get used to it after a while there's the dash I'll do that again I don't think I caught it properly so you've got a, a digital speedo digital odometer analog taco which is good because the uh, R didn't have that You've got a couple of lights up here, I believe there's a neutral light, a petrol light, and a warning. On the switch block I noticed you've got a... Yeah, hazards. That's pretty cool. There's a, a, a pass light on the front there, high and beam, and then just your normal indicators. So, without further ado, we're just going to roll around town real quickly. I'm just going to give you some impressions of this one. Obviously if you want to go a bit more into in depth of... Uh, the other bikes with this engine, you can check out the other other reviews. So again, this, this engine is a good lugger, but uh, below two grand, it doesn't like just, just pussyfooting around. You sort of want to keep it in its gear range. It's especially sensitive compared to other bikes. Uh, it's not too tall, it does feel a little bit short. You put your foot down comfortably, I can. I'm 184 centimetres tall. Um, and I have no trouble putting a, a foot down on this bike, flat footed, or even both feet if I need to. See, that's uh, that really, really short rev limit kicking in. Feels pretty nimble. Being really sort of short, it gives it that feel where it's um, it's really quite agile, and flickable. Um, but this bike is quite stiff as well, so the harder you sort of go into it, the better it reacts. But 
But handling corners, just little bits and pieces of stuff like this through town, it loves it. That's that shaking bit. Other things I've noticed on this bike compared to the other bikes. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try and lug that again and I'll show you the speedo. The whole instrument cluster a little bit, I don't know, it's obviously rubber mounted, but it shakes around a lot. It gets to the point where it's a little bit unreadable, but it's a, hardly a gripe. You don't really need to see the speedo when you just come out of a corner and lug it like that. All right, watch this speedo. That wasn't too bad. Um, that back tyre locks up really easily. So that torque, just straight off the bat, you can have some real fun with that. I really wish, after testing, uh, test riding a couple of these bikes now, I really wish this engine had like another 1000 RPM or 1500 RPM. Just, I don't know, every single time, and it, granted it could be me being used to a sports bike, could be, could be that, but um, I've even noticed with the other bikes, if you just had another 1500 RPM and could rev it out that tiny bit more, it would just totally fill in the gaps of the, of the, of the bike, because quite often I come out of a corner, that's a funny place to park, right? Quite often I've come out of the corner, and you rev it up. There it's alright if you lug a gear lower. But I have noticed, you do it where you should sort of have it so it doesn't lug out of the corner properly. It, uh, it, it is really short, really short. And how short? That's where you take off from, so you're basically at three grand, right? And I apologise for this wind. I'll just show you how short this rev range is. But if you learn to love it, it's fun. There's not much there, eh? Not much at all. Uh, one more time, just, I'll get down to two grand, or just under two grand. You can feel that starting to chug, 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 chug under two grand, so two grand. There's not a lot of rev range to play with there. But like I said, if you, once you get used to that, it is really fun. And that is the torquey rev range, that, that little, that from just down the bottom. You can see every time I did that, the front wheel lifts up. Easy, not even trying. I'm gonna have to cut in front of you, mate, sorry. The last thing I'm doing is getting cut behind you, stuck behind you, sorry. See there? Speedo just wobbled. Um, that's about it. I mean, it's, it's a very around town oriented bike. You wouldn't wanna take this touring. You'd want a big body screen. It's not long enough. You can't stretch out. This is as much as I can stretch. And I, I, I know it's hard to show that on camera, but I can move forward about half inch, maybe an inch. And I can move back while I'm already at the back position because I've got quite long arms. So that's uh, probably my little gripes about it. Nothing too crazy. Every bike's got its little things. Ergonomics besides the seat, very good. The mirror is excellent. Um, the only thing I do find is a couple of times I've gone to take a hand off or something like that to move a visor, put your visor up or down or whatever. You hit them. You hit them quite easily. Um, I haven't adjusted with them because this isn't my bike. So I feel that? Doesn't like third. Because yeah, it's not my bike or anything like that. But if it was mine, I'd probably push it like that and pull these like that. So it wasn't a big deal. But I do love the snappiness of that engine and the way it sort of translates through to the street. It's a very playful gear range. Oh, that's cool, that's new too. Lifeguard. It's a very, very playful gear range. And the way that this particular one, it lugs a, a, a little bit less down low than the, uh, the R and the Z. The stiffness, the, uh, the road handling and all that sort of stuff, compared to the other one, it's uh, a little bit, the weight distribution feels lower. It doesn't feel as top heavy as the, the Z or the R. Definitely doesn't feel as long as the R. The R feels, once you start like you're doing this in the dirt, you can feel the end of it sort of almost tank slapper and flex a little bit. So you can feel the length of it with this. You can't, damn that wind is so strong. So it's just as a last little bits and pieces of this video, 
We're going to go up here and test the brakes on a quiet street and just see what they're like compared to the to the uh, Z and the R. R was slightly better, although it only had a single disc on the front compared to the twins on the Z. Surprisingly, only slightly better. And this one, you can see that there, twin discs again. So I'm pretty interested to see how this one stops. I'm going to do it in a couple of real world situations this time as well, so... Back tyres are shit! Right, what I'm going to do now, ladies and gents, is the brake test. I'm actually going to a little spot where I first did my licence. Um, and this is where they take you to do the brake test and all that sort of stuff, so... Nice, quiet little street. I'm going to do two brake tests, ladies and gents. One here in a sort of suburban setting where you would generally find yourself with a car pulling out in front of you or something like that. So here I am travelling at 50 kilometres an hour. I'm going to approach to where basically that street is. I'm going to go just past the street as not to interfere with traffic and then I'm going to pretend a car pulls out in front of me and slam on the brakes and see what happens. Right. Now this bike has less than eight, well, what has it got on it now? A thousand kilometres. Had 800 k's on it when it came into the track. It's had a couple of test rides. That back brake, it's not very good. Well, it's good. The tyre is not very good. I apologise. What I'm going to do is go up to a slightly higher setting. Try it from a slightly higher speed. Front brake, brake, front brake feels fine. Plenty of feeling there, although it didn't grab as much as I thought it might with the twin discs and a street tyre. The brake, the rear brake grabbed straight away and it did lock up with very, very little application. So here we are at 70. Yeah, not bad, but not great. I grabbed the uh, rear a lot less that time and it try you do not have a lot of feel in that rear brake. Not much at all. So in summary, ladies and gents, I actually do like this bike. Compared to the new MT-03, hmm, it's a hard one. Some days you're like that out of the corner talking to us, like this. We can just chop through gears and be like bop, 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 bop. Sometimes you like to rev it a little bit, you know what I mean? You've got that sort of, bit more of a sports bike feel where you're boot, boot, boot. This thing's, it's sort of a love it or hate it sort of thing. And I don't mind it. I don't mind it at all. Um, I really didn't think I'd like it. When I first seen them come out, I hated the look of them. I'm not a fan of the looks. The twin pipes at the back, the way they sort of, yeah, it's just it's not me, but the way it rides and the way it feels isn't bad. I'm sure there's a couple of improvements. That rear brake is jeep as creepers. That's touchy and very weird. Um, I would probably do braided lines and different pads in there just to get a bit more feel out of it and just change the pads in the front because they feel okay, but they could be grabbier. One of the first things I would do is change the tyres. These tyres do not do this bike justice. If you slip and slide around all the time, I can feel it acting up, if, if you know what I mean. Especially that rear. Just don't have a lot of feel there. I do love the way it, like I say, it, it, it zips in and out of traffic. You've got that bottom end torque to shove you in and out of situations and, and get you out of trouble. Enough to overtake. You do have to learn to ride it though. It's um, not as forgiving as learn a bike as the new MT-03. That bike, you could lug it down to a thousand RPM and it won't, it won't phase it at all. It'll just slowly pull, give you a little bit 
sort of jerky sort of rough this will actually sort of jerk 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 and then just stall so it's it's a lot less forgiving but it's a really good bike and if you can pick one up you're probably going to get one for a lot cheaper than the than the new uh, mt03 if you can pick one up and you're the sort of guy that doesn't mind that sort of style doesn't mind the old big single you could quite like this bike and there's no reason why you wouldn't So that's going to be it ladies and gents, I'm going to take this back to work, get my bike back, hopefully the boys have tightened up my rear set, I went to leave yesterday, my bike wouldn't change gears properly and my rear set was loose, that was fun, so I rode all the way back here with a loose rear set and not being able to change gears, and yeah, just a little off topic story for you. Full face out, ladies and gents. What the hell? I'm not going to fit through there, Kirtley. Thank you.